So hey everybody, today is the release of Plasticity 1.2 and actually it is a massive release. There are well over 30 new features. Um, it is a significant improvement to, uh, to Plasticity. Of course, a lot of the dozens of features are relatively minor. They're useful when you need them and in the background otherwise, but you know, a bunch of these features are really significant and change what's possible to do in Plasticity. So I'm gonna walk through some of those focused on surfacing today. Before I do that, I wanna mention a change to the defaults of the navigation of Plasticity. So starting in Plasticity 1.2, orbiting will orbit around what is under the cursor. Um, so it's similar to how zoom zooms to what's under the cursor by default in Plasticity. If you don't like that, you can disable this in the settings. Um, I think you know 60% of people love it, 40% of people hate it. The theme of version 1.2 is surfacing. And to kind of explain what surfacing is, I'm gonna use an example of something that is not much surfacing. This gun is the sort of thing that Plasticity 1.0 and 1.1 uh, is really optimized for making. It is a mechanical looking part. And what we mean by a mechanical looking part is that primarily the faces uh, of the body are what we call analytic, meaning they're made out of planes. Okay, so I'll duplicate this and untrim it so you can see. It's just a flat surface. Surfaces like this, which come from fillets, are really just cylindrical surfaces. A uh, screw head or whatever you wanna, whatever this is technically called in the literature is just a torus. And, the, uh, and so in general, many of these surfaces, including the curved surfaces like this, are either just blend surfaces, planar surfaces, spherical surfaces, tor toruses, et cetera. They're analytic meaning that they're not NURBS, actually. They're using more direct mathematical geometrical formulas for the representation of those surfaces. And those more direct analytical representations are computationally much simpler, more exact, more precise, more efficient. Now, a gun like this, in fact, does have some NURB surfaces. This was probably made with the patch command. And you can see sort of under the cover that you have uh, a complicated trimmed nerve surface with all of these CVs, and this probably came from using the patch command. So for example, um, if we were to look at this mouse, which is the Logitech MX Master mouse, which in fact I use to program on, um, you can see from the shape of this object that uh, there's almost no planar surfaces and very few of these surfaces also are gonna really be made of cylinders or toruses or spheres. Almost everything is sort of this sculptural nerves body. Now, quick preface, surfacing is an advanced skill. It is difficult, it's not suitable for beginner users, and that's why it's often a neglected feature set in other CAD programs. But surfacing can be helpful for beginners who are using a so primarily solid workflow and can use surfacing here and there. But we're gonna focus now on a kind of advanced surfacing workflow. One of the important new features is the ability to trim 3D curves. You could always trim 2D planar curves in plasticity, for example, like this, but now you can take three-dimensional curves and you can trim them at any intersection point, okay? So anytime you have these green dots, a curve can be trimmed, um, regardless of whether there's a CV or a vertex or whatever. Now that might seem like a boring capability, but it underlies one of the more basic enhancements to patching. Now we could always patch these closed loops before, okay? But now it is possible to take open curve loops and patch them really rapidly without trimming any of these curves. Now you, of course you can trim if you want, and there are cases where you will want to trim, but you can rapidly block out any sort of wireframe body and fill in um, nice trimmed surfaces uh, 
whenever you want. So focusing on this scenario, for example, there are two kind of ambiguous things we could patch. We could patch this. What we're trying to do is patch sort of the interior of this. We can't do that automatically, so what we can do is use the explicit trimming functionality. In this case, we're going to unjoin this at its intersections. And uh, now we have these pieces that we can patch. And of course, we can join everything back together if we want. Um, so the nice thing about this is we can very rapidly start filling in surfaces and just sort of blocking in the three-dimensional shape of the object, and we can make those surfaces perfect later. So let's sort of repeat this situation here. I shouldn't honestly have, uh, have joined this back together. But if we uh, unjoin this and we try and patch it, you'll notice we get an error. It says there's a gap in the boundary edges. If we actually turn on CVs, we can see that this is not blue. So we need to snap this back, and it's blue again. So we can patch this guy. And you can basically go through this whole body, rapidly patch it, and get all of the surfaces you need. Okay, um, Even really complicated concave and, and convex surfaces can be easily patched. And as long as the curves are touching, it is a relatively simple and even, I might argue, easy to use surfacing workflow. OK, and now we can transition to some of the more advanced surfacing techniques uh, that are available in Plasticity 1.2. Let me patch this guy real quick. And let's focus on filling in this gap. So I'm just going to take these and isolate them. So I'll join these into one body. And let's talk about filling this hole. Okay, Rather than building it from the wireframe, we're going to work from the surfaces in. Now, one of the incredibly powerful new features in the patch command, uh, as well as in Loft, is the ability to specify G0, G1, G2 continuity at the boundaries of each edge individually. So here, we can specify that we want a G1 connection or maybe G2, although the surface is going to get super complex. And we have much nicer reflection lines, as you can see, on these transitions. Now, of course, this needs to be G0, and this needs to be G0. We will probably smooth this out with like a fillet later. Um, but this uh, is a really powerful tool for blocking in surfaces really quickly. It's not a Class A workflow, but it is uh, super easy to use and uh, wait, yeah, just way more accessible than many of the alternatives. But just a reminder, when I say easy to use, I mean comparably so. Surfacing is harder. It requires understanding. It's not for beginners. You know, uh, Don't approach this thinking it will be easy. Complementing this is the new bridge surface command, which gives us the ability to do cord with fillets. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. There are dozens of new commands, and uh, hope, you know they just have completely transformed the surfacing workflow, I think, in plasticity, uh, making this a very capable surface modeler. This video is already long enough, so I, so I think I will stop here. And uh, if you're interested in some of the other functionality, watch the, watch the like official commercial that Cooper made. Uh, I guess I'll insert it right now.